And we're continuing. Next speaker is going to talk about the latest trends in microelectronics that are needed to support AI. So the uh, executive director of Sergei Belousov, main trends in microelectronics to support AI. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Sergei Belousov and uh, as it was mentioned I work in Sber and today I would like to talk about um, uh, what is under the hood of all of these systems related to AI. Uh, during this conference Many speakers have already mentioned that AI is the electricity of the 21st century. And it is true the companies and the organizations and countries that are at the edge of this technology will and have already determined the various areas of the markets that are going to be uh, disrupted, starting from the banking, going to the automation of the manufacturing. The previous speaker has said that the uh, scientific community expects some revolutions and disruption, a new architecture will appear. But currently, however, uh, the neural networks, uh, the transformer NNs are still relevant. They're used, the number of parameters that they are using uh, is increasing, and moreover, uh, the uh, visual transformers are catching up. These are the two most relevant technologies in the area. But when we talk about AI, when we talk about NN, we are forgetting about the fact uh, that uh, there is something that underpins these technologies, and these technologies are working based on the hardware and the uh, developers and uh, producers that are present in the market continue with uh, the new to, to develop new products with better specs with better efficiency better productivity if we talk about AI driven compute. Uh, there are two major areas here. Uh, CPU compute, using specialized devices uh, to compute like accelerators. Three main types are general purpose GPU, tensor uh, modules and uh, compute modules uh, similar to data flow. In addition, currently we are observing this trend where major companies are developing their own solutions, their own hardware used at their data centers and they provide users the opportunity to apply them and to take, to take advantage of them as a service. However, de development of hardware would be unimaginable if we didn't consider the technology that underpins it. There is this uh, a bit of a provocative opinion where semiconductor technology, as is stated, has reached its limit. However, this year, a major company in the market uh, doing research in uh, AI technology, IMIC. They presented their uh, roadmap, which shows that according to their expectations, semiconductor technology will continue to evolve thanks to the appearance of new processes, new production stages, in particular the nano imprint lithography. They will allow creating new architectures, new structures of transistors. And as a result, it will help the entire world to reach two angstroms by 2024. 
That is indeed very impressive. Let's have a look at how the needs of today's neural networks correspond to the capabilities provided by the available hardware. We have created this uh, diagram which shows the most popular, the most significant neural networks and the existing hardware, which I'm sure many of you already use in your work. This diagram shows that there is this area, especially the area that uh, encompasses the most uh, frontier state-of-the-art developments, it's called memory wall. This problem means that the most advanced neural networks have the number of parameters which are insufficient for the existing, uh, which, which could not be satisfied with the existing hardware, which means AI developers have to work around it somehow. So what are the options? How can we overcome this problem of memory wall? One option is we can try to reduce the dimensions of data used in computing. I am talking about this uh, transition from classic types of data used in HPC segment towards AI-specific types of data. This way we are reducing the uh, precision, but we are increasing the parameters that are available on the hardware platform. So we can increase the number of parameters this way, but we can also think about how we can increase the overall volume of memory. We can do that by using new technology, by using new types of memory available in the market already. In particular, it's high, high bandwidth memory, HBM. Hardware developers are migrating to HBM and uh, thanks to its uh, positioning close to the computing core, it can ensure high throughput productivity and thanks to its um, assembly structure, this type of memory can also provide large amounts of memory for the needs of developers. Major uh, hardware manufacturers, uh, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA are already actively using HBM in their hardware, in their devices. And in addition, HBM uh, overall continues evolving. We expect new standards to appear very soon. HBM 4, this new standard will more than double the throughput capacity of the channel. The memory module will double the number of signal lines between the memory and the uh, computing module, and thanks to 3D assembly, the overall capacity of uh, the memory will also go up. Apart from increasing memory and throughput capacity, we also need to consider latencies. The uh, most obvious um, uh, option here, the most obvious solution here, is to have these computing cores next to the memory. So as a result, we get this uh, memory soup uh, with uh, computing cores integrated in it. As a result, we minimize latency in data transmission. This technology is uh, being developed by such majors as Samsung, Hynix, and a number of startups also exploring this uh, area. However, it does have some fundamental limitations. First is the size of the crystal uh, of processing units, accelerators. 
that are being manufactured these days, they are technologically limited. When you um, uh, manufacture an uh, integral circuit board, uh, you need to take into advantage uh, the geometrical dimensions of the lithograph, photolithographer. So it's getting expensive, it's getting complicated. This is why we are not seeing a, a, a rapid growth in size, because the manufacturers and the developers are looking for alternative ways to overcome this. There is another aspect. When you transition from one technology to another, the memory cell is very tough to scale. Previously, when you would migrate your product from 16 to 7 nanometers, you could expect uh, a 60 Four percent reduction in the memory cell size. These days, when you use advanced technology, five and three um, nanometers, you do not see the same effect, the same reduction. What do you do? The most promising technology today is the chiplet technology. It can help you increase the computational. Um, surface of your device thanks to the following. But first, chiplets, what it's all about. I understand this is a difficult topic. This is uh, a technology which allows dividing your large crystal into smaller computational blocks, and then you uh, make these blocks as separate crystals and integrate them onto the interposer, the external carrier uh, uh, carrying media. This technology helps you combine on a single carrier, not just devices from different manufacturers, uh, not just devices from one manufacturer, but from different manufacturers. You, um, the important thing is that you ensure high-speed interconnect. The chiplet market, as expected, is expected to grow at an exponential pace. By 2026, the estimates are that 100% of all processing units of all server class processes will be based on chiplets, will be involving this chiplet technology, 100% by 2026. As I said, chiplets help you create heterogeneous systems, you ensure interconnect, and then the question is, the interconnect must be maintained by different manufacturers of different computational hardware. What it means is that we need to unify standards. We need to align them. This effort is underway. Uh, UCI E Consortium has been created this year, supported by major companies such as Intel, NVIDIA, Microsoft. They have issued a standard for the interconnect within the same core, UCIE, built on the classic uh, PCIe Express. PCIe Express, interestingly, is becoming this uniform standard, not just for interconnection between the processor and some outer um, device, but also to implement interconnection among modules within the same core using chiplet technology. The PCI Express standard itself is also evolving. Last year, for example, PCI Express 6.0 standard was issued. For the first time, it used the PAM4 encoding technology, which means you can now implement speeds of up to 64G. In the next uh, one or two years, we, we expect a new standard, PCI, PCI Express 7.0. So that standard is here to stay, definitely. And so hardware man manufacturers need to take this into consideration. They need to factor it into their work. 
And with their future hardware, they need to integrate the latest versions of the PCI Express standards. What else is used in addition to that standard? Uh, I'm sure you all know the word optics. I've been talking extensively today about the various technologies used in developing state-of-the-art hardware. And optics is basically the quintessence of all these technologies, using chiplet technology and high-speed interconnect in the chiplets. All this will help us uh, um, use optic uh, interconnect and uh, optic modules very, very close to the computational devices, which means in the near future, very soon, the market will likely see hardware, will see devices where optics uh, is already integrated with uh, other elements, with other devices. So optics uh, will be used not just to connect servers and server racks at data centers, but also to connect different microchips and um, different uh, elements within a single server. And uh, in conclusion, I, I just wanted to once again briefly outline the main trends in hardware as related to AI. The first main trend is using AI-specific data. Next is using HBM memory, using the most advanced state-of-the-art technology as available in the market, chip-led technology and optics. That's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the presentation. One uh, question from myself, if I may. This acceleration is uh, breathtaking, but as far as I understood, there is this direct correlation between advancements in electronics and the capabilities of AI. To what extent are they interconnected and what is your forecast for the near future? Well, the development of AI is pushing electronics forward. Electronics is driving microelectronics and microelectronics in its turn is ensuring the, ev ev the evolution of AI. So this is, this is a cycle. As I said in my presentation, the technology, manufacturing technology is also developing. We are seeing new hardware in the market from major companies. And I hope that AI developers will be uh, benefiting from these resources, from um, uh, the new hardware in order to create new products in their own field. So you're very optimistic. I am. Thank you very much.